Parliamentary budget officer says the government is sitting on billions of dollars of unspent money. Why collect it and then not spend it? What's happening to the leftover cash? Meanwhile, a report out today from the OECD says Canada's short-term growth will be sluggish, raising the question, why not use some of that lapsed funding to stimulate the economy? Is it prudent fiscal management or a strategic political move in time for the 2015 election? Uh, we shall find out as we go on the money. Joining me now, Ian Lee, an assistant professor with the Sprott School of Business here in Ottawa and in Toronto, the economist for the United Steelworkers, Aaron Weir. All right, Mr. Lee, let's start with you. The PBO says the federal government are underspending by billions of dollars, $10 billion of unspent dollars in the last three years. Meanwhile, they say they're headed towards an almost $4 billion surplus by 1516, right. just in time for the election, to deliver on promises like the $2.7 billion cost for income splitting. Is this the best thing? Should something else be done with the lapsed spending? Well, just for the benefit of your, your viewers, lapsed uh, spending is money that uh, wasn't spent in the fiscal year, and so the parliamentary vote that approved that spending expires. Mm -hmm. They can't just shift it somewhere else into infrastructure because the money has lapsed. The authority to spend it has lapsed. So we could argue, and I think it could be argued, this shows prudent fiscal management. They're not spending every last nickel. Uh, they're finding that on occasion that there isn't a need to spend it. But I want to address your stimulus argument. The government is already stimulating the economy. That's what the deficit is. Deficit financing is stimulus. The government is somewhere between 15 and 20 billion a year uh, uh, in deficit. So they are already stimulating the economy. And we know that the problems in Canada are really driven by problems outside of Canada, Europe, United States. And so there's no need for us to stimulate. We already did it in very unusual, exceptional circumstances. 2009, it worked, but we're past that now. We're back into the growth trajectory albeit slower than we want. Well, it may be slower. The U.S. is still stimulating through quantitative easing, and they're growing faster than us. Mr. Weir, what's your take? Well, I guess my take is that this $10 billion in each of the last three years of unspent money means that the government is not providing programs and services that Parliament voted for, or it's deliberately inflating departmental budgets so that it can look good by coming in under budget. Either way, that's bad public administration. But the public policy question you asked is what to do with these extra billions that appear to be kicking around the fiscal framework. I would make the pitch that they should be invested in uh, infrastructure. If you look at the um, depletion of existing public infrastructure combined with years of underinvestment in infrastructure, Canada has an infrastructure deficit of about $145 billion. So there's a long-term argument to start chipping away at that uh, deficit, but I think there's also a short-term argument for investing in infrastructure that will help boost the economy and create jobs at this time of slower than projected growth. Aaron. If you take Aaron, you, yes, are, you are arguing you want to stimulate the stimulus because we're already stimulating the economy, point one. Point two, we do spend money on infrastructure, okay? In Chapter 3.3 .3 of Budget 2013, anybody can go look it up at Finance Canada, there's a long elaborated list of the $53 billion over the next 10 years that's going to be spent on infrastructure. So the idea that we are not spending money on infrastructure is just simply inaccurate. But I want to respond to your point. You're saying let's respond to, let's do something something about the economy. Uh, why don't you and your people in the uh, manufacturing sector respond to the Canadian Association of Exporters and Manufacturers that just released a report last week called Oil Sand Manufacturing that showed there's a trillion to a trillion eight dollars of capital. Yeah, well, let's just cap stay on, on infrastructure for, that's for a moment here, Ian. That the is infrastructure. The, 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 the public infrastructure investment you talked about in the last federal budget is very much back end loaded. It's pushed way out into the future. So we're going to wait a long time before that investment begins, and it's certainly not going to provide any boost to the economy anytime soon. All the more if reason it turns to, out to there, there's more the money in the fiscal framework than the government spending, I would say that's an argument for bringing some of that infrastructure spending forward, for making the investments today, uh, both for long-term reasons uh, and also because we need the boost. Now, an aspect of this OECD report was a call for the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates within the next couple of years. 
I don't necessarily endorse that prescription, but I do recognize that interest rates are going up at some point. So now's the time for governments to finance these long-term infrastructure investments when they can do so at rock-bottom historic low Aaron, interest rates. you have ducked what I just said. The amount we're talking about infra public infrastructure uh, paid for by the federal government is relatively small change. There is a trillion to a trillion eight, 1.8 trillion of infrastructure. This is CapEx spending, pipelines and so forth over from between now and 2030. And that was based on a survey of your employers in your sector that employ your workers. And you are not responding and going after these opportunities. In fact, you guys are partnering along with Jim Stanford's union with the environmentalists. You're in bed with the enemy and you've come out against fracking, or at least Jim's uh, union has. Well, you should you be embracing the, uh, the oil sands and the oil and gas companies because of the massive opportunity this represents for our country and the jobs well, Ian, it will create for your employees. Your, one of the, your one of the things, members. Ian, that that study showed was that Canadian manufacturers are actually getting very little of the business uh, coming from the oil sands. So I guess I would challenge you to say what kind of public policies would you propose uh, to give Canadian manufacturers well, I want to, I want to, a business okay, share okay, of that business? Okay, would you propose reason, a, a buy-Canadian policy for the oil sands, Aaron, Ian? Aaron, the reason why you're not getting very much, and the latest data just came out from the Federal Reserve St. Louis, showing that unit labor costs for manufacturing have soared in Canada uh, to 180 on the index, while U.S. has fallen below 100, and we have a massive competitive disadvantage on wage in the manufacturing sector. You guys in the unions are going to have to copy the German unions, work closely with the companies in the manufacturing sector to make your wages competitive uh, with the United Ian, States. the reason that unit labor costs have gone up in American dollars is that there's been this huge appreciation of the exchange rate. The loonies gone up it's by 60% right, I got, I got compared 30 to seconds. the American dollar. Uh, just before I go, we started this with $10 billion in lap spending. Right. The parliamentary budget watchdog says you know, and Tony Clement wants another 5.4 billion approved for other uh, issues. Right. And the the PBO is saying, why do we have so much lap spending? You call it prudence, but it's a well, big number. Right. Why so much well, lap spending? Okay. Is it being is it yeah. held back for political reasons? Quick. Okay. Very quickly. First off, it's 10 billion on an annual spending of 250 billion. That's what the federal government spends. So it's not a gigantic amount. But I'll answer your question. 0.3 percent higher than what right. was spent last Look, year. Look, uh, you know, uh, Oscar, uh, Oscar Wilde famously said that imitation is the most sincere form of uh, of flattery. I think what the conservatives are probably doing is a little bit of earnings management. They learned at the feet of the master called Paul Martin, who was a genius at this. And what they're probably yeah. doing is doing a little bit of padding on the books to make themselves look better. That's called uh, politics. Uh, Aaron, you got 10. Uh, I agree they're padding the books. That's bad public management. Uh, and then they're going to waste the surplus on uh, income splitting, which really doesn't benefit the families that need it most. We should be improving employment insurance and investing in needed public infrastructure. Oh, we will have and an making income, ourselves more we, competitive. We will have yeah. an income splitting debate and wait till we put Ian Lee on the spot to see if he supports the income splitting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Well, I'm almost excited answering. for that as the Grey Cup. Do you want a yes or no? I don't support it because it only benefits 15% of Canadians. It doesn't benefit 85% of us, including me. We end on a note of agreement. Rare agreement. Ian Weir. There you go. Wow. Coming up on